This is the story of how the misfortune of a small boy would lead to discoveries that would prove to be a blessing to the world. This tale has all the elements of a good drama, such as suffering, romance, revelation, advertising, and triumph. It all began in 1949, in the peaceful village of Willowvale, in the heart of the Transkei, South Africa. At five years old, Eervolt Megacy was an adventurous child, exploring the surroundings of his parents' trading store and visiting the local Kosa people. Booty! Come inside! He was also imaginative and believed that if birds could fly, so could he. So one day, he climbed high in a tree and when he reached the top, full of faith, he launched himself off a branch. He quickly learned about gravity as Mother Earth received him with a mighty thud. He was unconscious for some time. When he finally awoke, he immediately felt Ouch. a very sharp pain in his lower back. It's gonna be fine, boy. But everything was not fine. The pain would continue every day of his life. For the next 30 years, medical tests showed nothing wrong. So the little boy had to learn to live with the pain. He started school and it was a stressful experience as the teacher often scolded him for not sitting still. His teen years were worse. His back was so stiff, he couldn't even bend forward further than his knees. And his gym teacher took this as a personal challenge. Boy, stop fooling around and touch your toes. Often his knees would unexpectedly collapse, so he felt like an old man. Everyone concluded that the problem was all in his mind, and he began to believe they were right. He became quiet and withdrawn, sitting on the sidelines of life an observer rather than a participant. The time came for Eval to go off to university to study chemistry. He was determined to become part of this new world, so he forced himself to join in activities, even playing house rugby and lifting weights to try and strengthen his back. But other health problems arose. He had itchy ears, laboured breathing, and a constant itch over his shoulder blades. Then, when he was 21, he noticed Gail Ashburner, a 19-year-old language student, and knew immediately this was the love of his life. He asked her to a dance. She accepted the invitation, and their future was sealed. Why is this young lady so attracted to this strange, reserved young man? In his quietness, she saw depth, and somehow she felt she had known him forever. Eervolt became an industrial chemist, and Gail a French teacher. They married and bought a house in Cape Town. He told her very little about his physical problems, which continued to escalate. At times, he would leap out of bed, clutching a cramping calf. Do you have to be so dramatic? His breathing difficulties worsened, and to cure his supposed allergies, he underwent a series of injections. One medical doctor proposed chiseling his nasal passages wider. Another suggested an operation on his knees. No way! He declined all these suggestions. The lowest point came when he started waking with temporary paralysis. From the waist down! Are you okay? Uh, I can't feel my legs! 
Although he didn't confide his fears to Gale, he became convinced that he would one day be confined to a wheelchair. Then a friend suggested, Arr, Why don't you try chiropractic? Arr. At that stage, he was prepared to try anything that didn't involve surgery or injections. At last, hope dawned. He went for chiropractic adjustments two or three times a week, and each time he experienced several hours of relief. If the answer to your problem lies in the spine, then we must go to the USA and study chiropractic. And so they set off on a grand adventure, enrolling at an American college. This college was recommended for teaching the pure principles of chiropractic. The body has an innate intelligence that can heal itself. If the vertebral column is kept clear of subluxations, which interfere with the nervous system. Eobald and Gail excelled in their studies during the four-year degree program. But it was an enormous struggle financially, and both of them took part-time jobs. First as janitors, then Gail became a waitress, and Eobald joined a building crew. However, Physically, Eovald was having a hard time, as some of the traditional adjusting techniques were too vigorous for his back problem. So Gail went to many technique seminars and demonstrations, searching for an answer. And now, we reach the point in every good story, when the noble wizard makes an appearance. This key character was a retired chiropractor, renowned for his ingenious research. Dr. Richard Van Rupp. He had developed a way of reading the body's responses with fine detail and accuracy. Gail made sure to attend a weekend workshop. She had a clear sense of knowing, here lies truth. Graduation came and Eovald and Gail emerged as doctors of chiropractic. Back in South Africa in 1981, they opened their practice in their Cape Town house. There are so many chiropractors around. Where are we going to find patients? Hmm? Gail asked. Eovald replied with great optimism. I'd well, rather worry about all the people who'll have to turn away. Using Dr. Van Rump's principles, their approach was very different to other chiropractors, and the public responded. The practice was built up to full capacity in five months. Then one day, Eovald and Gail had a great revelation and realized that they could work together to speed up the process. Eovald read the muscular responses while Gail worked on the spine. By using this method, they could locate areas of tension that would have gone undetected by one person working alone. It was tremendously effective, and they were soon working on all their clients as a team. They began to make discoveries into the body's healing process, and every day brought new, exciting insights. They witnessed the natural miracles of the body's wisdom. Babies who had screamed from birth became placid and happy. Toddlers with so-called growing pains no longer begged to be carried. Some people, due to have back surgery, no longer needed the operation. Although the megacies were not treating any conditions, their patients reported a wide variety of changes. Eyesight improved, allergies cleared up, bladder problems, and digestive conditions were resolved. Infertile women fell pregnant, too many to recount. Even some cerebral palsy children, whose limbs were locked in spasm, started moving their arms and legs and learned to walk. And what of Eovald's health? Gail applied the new findings to him, and the day arrived when for the first time in 30 years, he woke in the morning pain-free. There is no pain. I must have died in the night. The key to his problems was disc pressure in his lower back. As the compression was released from the nerve supplying his legs, the pain withdrew. Also, as normal communication was restored in his upper back and neck, his breathing became normal and the other problems disappeared. 
leaving Earwald feeling young for the first time in his life. And Gail had her own life-changing experience. For many years, she had suffered from intense, nauseating headaches that seemed to come on for no reason. A breakthrough piece of research cleared up the mystery. The headaches were caused by compression just below the skull, resulting from exposure to harmful chemicals. These were substances consumed or inhaled or absorbed through the skin. After some sessions, Gail's headaches were a thing of the past. So the Megacies were healthy, successful and happy. That, of course, was the cue for the villain of the drama to enter. The role of the villain was played by the chiropractic authorities, who sent the police to invade their practice. This practice is illegal. It is now closed down. How is this possible? Why close down a perfectly good chiropractic practice? Here's what happened. At that time, in the early 80s in South Africa, all recent chiropractic graduates were officially illegal, as the chiropractic register had been closed some years before. However, as it was about to reopen, chiropractors in the power seats focused on promoting only the mixer type chiropractor, which was the type of chiropractor who seeks to add medical procedures to their scope of practice. The other type of chiropractor is the straight kind, who practice the pure principles and technique of chiropractic, and therefore no medical procedures or diagnosis were performed. The Megacies were straight chiropractors, and due to their success in the community, they were made examples of. The chiropractic authorities intended to remove them and their influence in order to ensure that the register counts mixes only. Eervald and Gail had to report to the police station to be fingerprinted. <laughs> this will be a good story to tell at dinner parties. <laughs> Nevertheless, they continued their practice with a court case looming. They would be convicted and receive criminal records, and their lives would be ruined. But their loyal patients sent an avalanche of letters to the Department of Health. This led to the intervention of several understanding politicians who played the role of guardian angels. They intervened and had the court case postponed several times. Finally, an important official discreetly summoned the Megacies to his office and told them, the law doesn't always ensure justice. My advice to you is to leave the chiropractic profession. Give your work another name, and you will no longer be illegal. Just make sure never to venture into the territory of diagnosis. And so, in 1987, they closed their chiropractic practice and opened a new practice, giving their technique a clear, simple name which accurately described their work. Their patients now became their clients. Many people approached the Megacies wanting to learn the technique. So a course was written and a small experimental group was trained. Thus, the BSR Academy and Association were born and the numbers of students grew. By 1997, Ewald's country roots made him long to leave the city. So, Handing their practice over to practitioners they had trained, he and Gail moved to their holiday cottage in a tiny settlement called Rondeflay in the Wilderness Lakes area on the garden route. Gail wondered. Will people want to come to this out-of-the-way place to study body stress release? In fact, the peaceful environment proved to be a great advantage. A place not only to study, but for students to focus on their own inner development over the five months of the training course. Every year, the number of applications grew. In 2000, the Megacies bought a large house on the hill. And Ewald was now so fit, he could carry heavy cement blocks and build retaining walls. The class expanded to 24 students. The word has spread to many other regions in the world. And practitioners have been trained for 18 countries. Now, in 2012, body stress release is 25 years old. And let's look back at how it came about. It all happened because Ewald Megacy fell out of a tree. And the years of research with Gail and the persecution of the chiropractic powers 
Today, this gentle technique is playing its part in enhancing well-being and making its contribution to the upliftment of the world. Ta-da! <laughs>